Hi. Today I would like to talk about distortion. We've actually talked about one type of distortion already, which you may not really think about as distortion, which is noise. But since noise does change the look of the image, uh, I think it qualifies as a type of distortion. But the kinds of distortion I want to look at today are caused specifically by lenses. And they're common especially in zoom lenses. When you zoom a lens all the way to a wide angle setting, you get what is commonly referred to as barrel distortion, so-called because it looks kind of like a barrel. And uh, in this uh, type of distortion, the image warps out on the sides uh, relative to the corners. So it's uh, bulging out. And that same lens, if it zooms all the way to a more telephoto position, might produce what is known as pincushion distortion, so-called, because it looks something like a pillow. And you can see this is the opposite of barrel distortion, where the sides get squeezed in uh, relative to the corners. So this is common, especially in long uh, range zoom lenses. For example, uh, a lens that goes from 18 to 200 millimeters will most likely have both of these types of distortions at either end of the spectrum. Uh, some lenses will also do a combination of barrel and pincushion distortion where it warps out in some places and in in others. This is called complex distortion, sometimes referred to as mustache distortion, because I suppose it looks a little like a mustache. So now I'd like to show you what these look like in an actual photographic situation. So here we have, move it over a little bit. Um, here we have, hang on, we'll go into that setting. There we go. Um, a photograph of a brick wall. And you can see in this, this was done with a wide angle lens. And you can see that there is a barrel distortion because the, image is bowing out on the sides, but also notice that it's bowing in at the edges, the very edges. So it actually is a more complex distortion. It's not simply barrel distortion. It really is more a more complex distortion than that. And this is at a, a at this with this particular lens at the widest angle setting it'll do. It's also showing another type of distortion, which is vignetting. Notice the way the corners of the image are darker. This particular camera is what is known as a full frame, has a full frame sensor, uh, and so it is utilizing a great deal of the lens. If the same lens were put on a camera that had a smaller sensor, you might be only seeing in about to here, and so you would probably not see that vignetting. But with the fuller, uh, the larger sensor, you're using more of the lens and therefore you increase the possibility of vignetting. All lenses vignette. The question is simply whether the uh, film or sensor is picking up uh, the, the edges of the lens where it starts to vignette. So in this case, it is. So the same lens zoomed to a more moderate um, intermediate setting. You can see now it has switched to some pincushion distortion a less, less complex distortion pattern here, um, and generally less less distortion overall. And then the same lens at its maximum setting of 105 millimeters is exhibiting about the same amount of pincushion distortion again. So I want to point out that um, this is Lightroom we're looking at this in, and Lightroom has a wonderful feature that allows you, I'm going to go to the develop module, and in the develop module, there is this section called lens correction. And in lens correction, you can go to either profile or manual. If you go to profile and you click on enable profile corrections, Lightroom has a database of many lenses um, and the kinds of distortion that, it ha that those lenses have at different focal lengths. So when I click enable profile corrections, it will read from the EXIF data what lens this was and what focal length it was and then go to the database and make the correction. So take a look and I'm going to move it over so you can see the whole image and you can see now it has corrected the vignetting and to a very large extent it has corrected the 
uh, complex distortion. We've still got a little bit. You can see um, it's, the image is also not quite straight, which is not the lens's fault. That's the photographer's fault. Um, but uh, it has practically corrected the, uh, the, the um, distortion there. So a very useful feature in Lightroom. Okay, now another type of distortion is the distortion you get from how far away you are from a subject. So in a portrait, here's a portrait taken with a, a very wide angle lens from fairly close up. And you can see that the uh, this young woman's face is rather distorted with her looking like it's a very, very long face, very, uh, very long nose. And then with a more normal lens, um, also, uh, take a look in the background. There is this little structure back here that looks very small. Um, this is characteristic of a wide-angle lens. If we go to a normal lens, the thing, in the object in the background appears closer, and she, her features are a little bit more uh, normal. If we go to a moderate telephoto lens, the background structure is even larger. Also, uh, it's more out of focus, even though all of these were shot at the same f-stop of 5.6. Um, and here, um, her features are more normal looking. This is uh, a moderate telephoto lens is common for this kind of head and shoulders portrait because it must, has a much more natural uh, proportions for uh, a portrait. If we go to a long telephoto lens, the background structures become very large, and um, and her features have flattened out some, and so um, it. And of course, the background is also much more out of focus, even at the same aperture. But uh, her features have flattened out quite a bit here. So the typically the preferred focal length for doing a portrait like this is more of a moderate telephoto lens. But you can see that, that there are several different types of distortion taking place in these. The relative, the relation between the size of background objects and and the size of foreground objects, that compared to that. And uh, also, of course, her features, the distortion that takes place there. So uh, those are all different types of distortions that um, are present all the time. And the trick is, in this type of situation, knowing uh, using them intentionally. And with the, in the case of the barrel and pin cushion distortion, uh, either photographing subjects where it doesn't matter or finding a way to correct them. Thank you very much. I hope that's been helpful.